talking about the practicing mind, developing focus and discipline in your life by Thomas M. Sterner. Does this sound like you? I will be happy when, and you can fill in the blank, when I graduate college, I will be happy, turns into when I get the job, I will be happy. Well, actually, when I get the promotion, you know what, scratch that, when I retire. And then you retire and get bored and go back to work because you're still not satisfied. And we do this in all areas of our life, whether it's our physical fitness, our finances, or relationship status. This concept that our idea of perfection and our goals are always changing is absolutely one of my favorite ideas in this book. Thomas says your goals will always move away from you. That is the way we keep evolving. We may get everything we say we want, and that may give us a flash of contentment, but it's not going to be a lifelong satisfying feeling. So until we learn to truly embody the practicing mind by staying present in our activities and enjoying the pursuit of our goals, not rejecting happiness until we accomplish them, we won't experience real lasting fulfillment. Learn to focus on the process or the way you are spending your time and not the product, what you want to accomplish, is one of the best ways to develop the practicing mind. For example, the process of playing the guitar is holding the chords and strumming, yet the product is the song. But when your focus is on the product and you make a mistake, you berate yourself, you become frustrated, anxious, and judgmental. Thomas says, in every moment of your struggle, by looking at the goal and constantly referencing your position to it, you are affirming to yourself that you haven't reached it. You only need to acknowledge the goal to yourself occasionally, using it as a rudder to keep you moving in the right direction. End quote. So let's take school as an example. People go to school so focused on the end result, getting the diploma, that instead of being focused on what they're actually there to do, which is learn and acquire knowledge, they focus on passing the test. See, you may pass the test and even the class with flying colors, but if you don't have a deep understanding for the material, you miss the point of an education entirely. And superhuman by habit, Tynan says, measure your success in your adherence to the process, not the product. When we focus on the process, we actually increase product quality and our own enjoyment because we aren't stressed out or trying to cut corners just to get it done. Process and practice go hand in hand, and there is a very distinct difference between learning and practice. Learning can be done unconsciously. You can pick up anything just from exposure. You probably unknowingly learn many of your beliefs about relationships and how to treat other people from your parents, whereas practice is deliberate. Thomas says practice implies awareness and will, demonstrated by deliberate repetition of the process with the intention of reaching a goal. So we want to actively practice, don't passively learn. Being okay with this practice is going to require patience. So we know it takes time to learn the guitar, to bowl a perfect game, to train for a marathon or learn to control your anger. Yet we still want instant results and when we don't get them, we are more likely to give up. If we understand and prepare for the fact that any worthwhile goal or skill takes time, But when you're focused on the process, you will enjoy every step, even the few inevitable ones backwards can be used as a tool to propel yourself forward. So the most crucial element in developing the practicing mind is awareness, specifically being aware of your thought stream. But isn't awareness always the first step? So if you aren't aware you have a problem, let's say your car is leaking oil, you obviously can't fix it. Thomas says, if you are not aware of the thought that you think in each moment, then you are the rider with no reins, with no power over where you are going. You cannot control what you are not aware of. Awareness must come first. And the best way to be aware of our thoughts is meditation, plain and simple. Check out my virtue class on meditation. It is one of the biggest reoccurring themes in all of these books, but it also is one of the biggest things people fail to implement. Be careful though, because increased self-awareness can lead to increased self-judgment, and we definitely want to stop judging ourselves. But Katie, I can't make good choices without judgment. Listen, 
everyone's heard that emotions cloud your judgment, but judgments are emotional in nature. Simply said, judgments are observations with a feeling attached. So to know what's good, you have to know what's bad. And Thomas sums up the issue with judgment. He says, judgments are always based on some preconceived idea of perfection, end quote. And we have already established that our idea of perfection is always evolving. So for example, you can take a picture today and you can think this is the cutest, most perfect outfit I have ever worn. And 15 years from now, you're going to look back at that picture and you're going to think, what the hell was I wearing? I can't believe I wore that. So how do we improve if we don't judge ourselves? Well, let's take a trip to the doc to find out. So DOC is Thomas's acronym, which stands for do, observe, correct. And judgment and observation are very different. So judgment is seeing things as you believe they should be, whereas observation is seeing things as they actually are. So to observe ourselves, Thomas recommends to act towards yourself the way a coach would, because a coach already knows that you're there to learn and improve. So when you mess up, they don't get emotional or judgmental mental or place labels on you like you do to yourself. I suck. I'm awful. No. Rather, they observe what you have done and then correct what can be improved upon. So judgment says, you suck, you miss a goal and you should have made it. And observation says, you miss a goal because of your form. Let's practice form. Now, observation still makes a correction, just in a non-emotional, more productive way. So to recap what we have learned, remember, your goals and idea of perfection will always change. So depriving yourself of satisfaction and enjoyment until you, the end result is going to be a big reoccurring problem for you because you're always just going to move on to the next thing. So measure your success in adherence to the process, not the product. Be okay with deliberate repetitive practice because acquiring skills, whether they're physical or mental, takes time. Self-awareness is the key, but in a non-judgmental, productive way. And let's end with a quote from Thomas. You need to keep reviewing these ideas so that you can hang on to their clarity and perspective. Otherwise, life steals them away. And that quote reminds us it isn't enough just to learn about these concepts of self-improvement. We need to practice them too. So please do the actualization worksheet and act on it. And you make it a great day.